Well, I guess it's not really Game of Thrones if we don't have incest involved, right? I was rooting for Damon and Rhaenyra, but not, not in this way. I'm rooting for you guys to get to the Iron Throne. I'm not rooting for you guys to make babies and, you know, keep the bloodline tight, but... I guess anything to protect the realm, as they continuously say in this show, but uh, let's get on to the review. Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and this is my review for House of the Dragon Episode 4. I do apologize that I keep releasing these pretty late. Look, football's back, and you know, so, so my Mondays are pretty busy, so I just gotta release these when I can. I, I watch the episodes on like Mondays and Tuesdays, so I gotta release them when I can, but thanks for tuning in, guys. Look, this episode really just takes a character development look at, you know, Rhaenyra herself after she's gone on this tour. Well, she ends the tour early for all her suitors to, you know, essentially propose to her or make their proposal to her as to why they should be her husband. She's not impressed by any of them. Granted, the little kid that stabbed old boy in the stomach, <laughs> I thought she would at least reconsider him because after he did that, even I was thinking to myself, uh uh Rainier, you might want to use this kid. He got some he got some balls on him, but I don't know. Maybe she just rather you know have sex with her uncle instead and just be you know close with the bloodlines and things like that. No, I'm not. I'm not going to be too heavy on the incest. I mean, of course we had Cersei and Jaime in the original Game of Thrones, but they were a little older. I don't know. This one struck me a little. <laughs> they were older. This one just was weird. Damon, they're at least they at least got to be like 12, 13 years apart. But the Targaryens are going to do what the Targaryens are going to do. I guess I have no idea, but. Overall, look, this episode really just took an in-depth character look at Rhaenyra herself and honestly the choices that she wants to make for herself as a woman. Granted, she's fine. She, where, Damon took her down to U Street, as you know, uh, here in Maryland, people call it, and uh, people were just absolutely turned out. Like, it was a freak show. It was a freak show down there. Why? I, where that's going to take Rhaenyra's character in the future, I have no idea. Maybe she's going to be... I, maybe she's going to be, you know, a freak when we when we do this time jump. But I got to be real with you. Her character, the actress that's playing her older version of Rhaenyra, it does not look like, you know, she's playing. She's uh, she doesn't look like she has time to have sex all the time. She looks like she just wants to kill you. So I don't I don't really know what this does for Rhaenyra's development. But I will say that essentially. This, this will have some sort of effect on Rhaenyra. This will have some sort of long-term effect on Rhaenyra. Not only the fact that she, you know, went down there, you know, and was exposed to all of that, essentially like the sex stuff, and just exposed to the people in general. She's going down there and, you know, pretending to be one of the commoners. Also, she was, while she was down there, she saw, you know, the people's reaction to her being heir. And while she knows in the back of her head, like, people do not want to see a woman stand on the Iron Throne. Like, that's the last thing people want to see. She already knows that. She really got a sense of how the people feel as well. And these are the people that she has to lead, or essentially the people she has to rule over and how they feel about her. And I feel like it just gave Rhaenyra a, a sense of, you know, getting ready for what's to come in the, in the years. Like, uh, essentially, she does have to find a suitor, and she does does have to at some point uh, figure out that you know she has to step into her role as the queen and she wants to stay heir and we all know at some point that's going to take a bad turn because Aegon is on his way you know he's going to get a little older and he's going to realize that he wants that throne too that's all that I, I'm very you know excited to see how that all comes into fruition because Otto Hightower just got fired thank god I mean we look man I really thought he would last a little longer as the king's hand I mean Littlefinger you know well I only bring up Littlefinger because Otto Hightower and Littlefinger have so many similarities but I feel like Littlefinger would have lasted a little longer as the king's hand but I don't know Otto Hightower though I do think this is not the last that we've seen of him he will be back he is going to find his way to backdoor the king once again and get to find his way to play you know, the Game of Thrones, because his grandson is going to be Aegon, his his grandson's going to be, you know, essentially the heir, or he's supposed to be the in line for, you know, the throne, so he's not going to go down without a fight. Now, as far as Damon goes, look, all he wanted to do this episode was cause complete chaos for the king, that's all he's ever wanted to do since he saw him, um, even his proposal to take Rhaenyra as his queen and the king didn't accept, 
I mean, look, Damon is off his off his uh, off his rocker, man. I don't understand what this dude be thinking sometimes, but look, he's a very entertaining character. This was just an episode where we really got to let, take a, a look at like the political side of Game of Thrones, and like I said, it's more of a character study because even with Alicent and Rhaenyra's relationship, I'm gonna call it because I they can I think they're gonna be back to being friends. I don't know. I think their relationship's getting better, but I'm just gonna call it a relationship for now. Even we took an in-depth look at their relationship and how Allison kind of, you know, she was afraid that that's what happened between her and Damon, but, you know, she had to take take her friend's side. And it was it was amazing to see that Allison actually still kind of cares for Rhaenyra. Well, she never didn't care for her. She just, you know, Rhaenyra was upset because she went for her best from her best friend to her mom and, and the queen of the entire realm. Like, it's just, yeah, who's going to be a, who's going to be happy about that? But Overall, look, this episode had fantastic dialogue. This was just a very entertaining episode to watch. Like, it's set up, like, okay, I say this about every single episode, but they all set up so much. Like, we're about to take our next, I think that after episode five, that's the last episode we get with the young actresses, and then we move on to the older actresses for Rhaenyra and Allison. and that's when things are going to take an absolutely crazy turn. I mean, look, things are already going to take a turn here, because look, Rhaenyra is set to, I imagine the next episode, I didn't, I don't don't watch the promos but i imagine the next episode is going to either set up rhaenyra and um the senate the snake sons uh the sea snake sons wedding or so well his name is future hendrix or uh hendrix valerian because house valerian that's where they come from but um essentially i think the next episode is going to be the wedding between those two and i, I imagine things are going to go horribly wrong or they're already going to be, you know, married. Like I said, I did not watch the promos. You guys can let me know in the comments below what you think is going to happen in the next episode. I try not. I try to stay away from the promos because I just want to go in and be absolutely surprised. Especially since we have time jumps, I'd rather them just present to me whatever is going on in this episode. I don't really need the promos. But look, overall, guys, this is an absolutely fantastic episode. Another great, you know, hour and thirty. Not hour and thirty minutes. An hour and twelve minutes of television. Look, it was an intense episode from start to finish. Even though I'm. I'm a lot of action is not going on. That's what I'm saying. Game of Thrones is doing a lot here to where they are, you know, keeping you on the edge of your seat with just fantastic dialogue. And the fact that we've already been through this before, like, you know the Game of Thrones lore, you know how some characters move in the shadows, you know how some characters are, or you know, like, who the sneaky characters are, who, you know, which character has what traits. Like, you know where this is headed. You know it's all headed down, like, for a bad down spiral. Like, you all know this is going to go off the rails at some point. More than likely, these next two episodes are going to be absolutely crazy because, like I said, this is the last episode we get with the young actresses, and then the next episode, episode six, is going to be the time jump, and then things are just going to go absolutely ballistic by then. Also, I will say this. Season five, episode nine of Game of Thrones. Um, I forget the girl's name, but she was talking about the Dance of the Dragons, where essentially that's the battle between Rhaenyra and Aegon for the for the realm, where she says, like, thousands of people die. She said, men fight, brothers fight brothers, dragons fight dragons. Like, we are in for a show, people. House of the Dragon has only gotten started, and it's only going to get bigger, so I need you guys to get on this train as quickly as possible. Granted, if you're watching this review, you already saw the episode, so I... Maybe you're already on the train. I don't know. But, look, I just need everybody to get on board and watch this as soon as possible because by the end of this thing, we are all going to be absolutely um, we are going to be absolutely shocked at what goes on here. But, look, that's my review for House of the Dragon Episode 4, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.